Hi everybody! In this video we're going to talk about the matrix equation AX equals B. Okay, so let's define this equation. We've been talking about matrices, we've been talking about column vectors and linear combinations of our vectors. So here's our definition. So capital A is a matrix and it's size M by N. So quick reminder, sizes of matrices are row times column. So A is an M by N matrix where its columns are the column vectors A1, A2, and so on, all the way to A sub n. And if x is in Rn, so x is a column vector, and its entries are whatever n is here. So if there's two entries, it would be in R2. If there's four entries, it would be in R4. Then the product of these two things, so the matrix A times this vector x, is just denoted AX, so there's an invisible multiply sign in between these two, and it's the linear combination of the columns of A using the corresponding entries in X as weights. Okay, so a little technical there, but not too bad if you just look down here. This is the equivalent of what we just talked about. So notice A is here. This is capital A as a matrix, where these are going to be columns of the matrix A. And then here's x. This is the vector x. And then when you just multiply, you would say that column 1 times x1, column 2 times x2, and so on. And you would get this linear combination of the columns of A and the weights from x. And that's going to be our vector equation. And then if it equals something, let's say b, then technically that's what makes it the equation. So note that ax is defined only if the number of columns of A equals the number of entries of X. So let me just mention briefly why this should make sense. Think about it. If there's, let's say, three columns in A and there's only two entries in X, we wouldn't be able to do this because we would have column one times X1, column two times X2, and there will be nothing to multiply column three by because we would be missing an entry here. So this only works, you can only multiply a times x if the columns of a is the same number of entries or rows from x. So for example, let's say that we have v1, v2, and v3, which make up, um, we're going to call that a, and we're going to write this as a linear combination, which is 3v1 minus 5v2 plus 7v3 as a matrix times a vector. Okay, so right now these are just going to be the column vectors, but we're going to put them together to make up A, and then we'll have that times a vector. Okay, so here's our solution. We had this linear combination, but we kind of broke it down into this matrix A, where the columns of A are the V1, V2, and V3. And then we can call this X, where the entries were the weights in front of, or the coefficients on v1, v2, and v3. And then if you want to put it back together, you will get exactly where you just came from. 3 times v1, minus 5 times v2, plus 7 times v3. And we call that a times x. Okay, now let's write this system of linear equations as a vector equation first, involving a linear combination of vectors. So we're going to go from what's called a vector equation to a matrix equation in this example. So let's say we have this system of equations. Okay, we've been working with systems of equations for a little while now, and so it's just two equations. Notice we have three unknowns, x1, x2, and x3. And so we can start by writing this as x1 times its coefficients. So notice what we have, row one across all three of these, or all four of these vectors technically, corresponds to equation one. So if you think about it, this says one, x1, which is right here, plus 2x2, which is here, minus 1x3 is here, equals 4. So this is equation 1 corresponding to row 1 and multiplying it by the weights x1, x2, and x3. And then same thing for row 2. Notice there's no x1 right here in equation 2. That's why we put a 0. So if it doesn't have your weight, x1, x2, or x3, any of them, you still have to fill in the spot. So that's why we put a 0 there. Okay, so this is called a vector equation. So we're going to go from here, this vector equation, to our matrix equation. Okay, so then the linear combination on the left side is a matrix times a vector. And so our vector equation we just looked at 
becomes this matrix equation. So notice what we did. We took all of our weights and we put them in a column vector. And then we took all of our coefficients and we put them in a matrix. And from our x1 variable, that was column 1. Remember, these were the coefficients on x1. Our x2 coefficients make up column 2. And our x3 coefficients make up column 3. And then this was what it equaled, 4 and then 1 from our two equations. So this is a matrix equation. And real quick, notice why we're able to do this. It does match what we just noted on the previous example. The columns here, there's three of them, is the same number of entries here in this vector. So three columns can multiply by three rows here because you would have 1, 0 times x1, 2, negative 5 times x2, negative 1, 3 times x3. So this works out. Three columns can multiply by three rows, and you'll, you'll be able to get an equation that's solvable. All right, so next let's talk about this theorem. Okay, so this theorem says if our matrix A is size m by n, then we have columns A1, A2, and so on, and then B is in Rn. Remember B, the entries match the number of columns in A. Then the matrix equation Ax equals B has the same solution set as this vector equation, which in turn has the same solution set as our system of linear equations, whose augmented matrix looks like this. So basically what this theorem is saying is that the solutions to our matrix equation is the same solutions to our vector equation, which is the same solutions to our linear system or system of linear equations that when we write it in matrix form, it looks like this. Okay, so we've been starting here. We, we uh, had systems of linear equations. We would put them in an augmented matrix and we solved. And so we already know how to solve a system like this. And now we're just sort of introducing this vector equation notation and now this matrix equation notation. But solving is the same thing we've done in the past. Okay, so now this is pretty similar. Uh, first, our equation Ax equals B has a solution if and only if B is a linear combination of the columns of A. That's essentially what we just saw right um, in the previous slide with our vector equation. So you have to be able to write the B equals something with uh, a linear combination of the columns of A times your weights x. Okay, right, so the following theorem, it's another theorem, all four of these are equivalent, so meaning they're either all true at the same time or they're all false at the same time, depending on your matrix A and your vector B. So letter A here, for each B in RM, the equation AX equals B has a solution. So if it has a solution, then for every B in RM, you can write it as a linear combination of the columns of A. And if that's true, then the columns of A span RM. So remember this, we talked about span of a matrix, and it just basically meant that you can take the entries or the, the columns of your matrix and write them as a linear combination, um, and all of the linear combinations would create this space. So RM, if this was, if your entries were maybe um, two, two entries in each column, then all the linear combinations of the vectors in A, the columns in A, would create two-dimensional space, R2. So we talked about that in a previous video. And so if those are all true, then also what's true is that A has a pivot position in every row. So again, something we mentioned in the past. Pivot position, that's going to be where your leading term is at, your leading coefficient or leading entry for the row. And basically what it means is if you keep going and solve your um, matrix, your augmented matrix, where you have a pivot position, it's letting you know like what that variable would equal, like x1. You'd have a pivot position, let's say, in column 1, row 1. So I know I'm saying a lot, but hopefully this is sounding familiar to you. Let me just kind of draw this out for you real quick. Okay, so here's my matrix over here that represents my system of linear equations. Remember the pivot position, I'm going with column 1, row 1. This is letting me know, eventually, if I keep simplifying, because I didn't simplify this one, that this would be one of this variable, we'll call it x1, equals whatever number ends up being over here in the augmented column. And then we would say that this next row would also have a pivot position, 
it would be to the right of the previous row pivot position. And then we would know that x2 equals the number over there and so on. Okay, so remember what we learned about that. And so again, all four of these are either true or all four of these are false. So then we would say letter A, if um, AX equals B does not have a solution, then it can't, letter B, writ, be written as a linear combination of the columns of A, and therefore um, the columns of A don't span RM, and then A must not have a pivot position in every row. Okay, so let's take a look at this example. We're going to just multiply A times X, because now that we know a little bit about the, these matrix equations, let's see how we actually do this multiplication. So notice A is a size 3 by 3 matrix, and then X is a 3 by 1. So let me show you something really quick. This is how I check that I can even go forward with the multiplication. We have a 3 by 3, and we're wanting to know can we even do this multiplication where we multiply it by a 3 by 1. And one of the first things that we mentioned today was that the columns of the vector, or the matrix A, have to match the uh, rows of the vector B, or sorry, X in this case. And so if that's true, then we can move forward. So yes, they match. And so a lot of times what I would do is I do something like this. So I say, okay, if I'm trying to do A times X, that looks like a 3 by 3 times a 3 by 1. And then I make sure that these two next to each other match. Okay, If those are the same number, the columns here and the rows here, if they match, then I can move forward. Okay, so now our solution, we have our matrix A times our vector X, and you can do this in a couple of steps. So what I'm showing you here is the couple of steps, but once you get used to this process, you can kind of skip some of these steps and jump to the result. And so what you're essentially doing here, and we'll break this down on a next, another slide. So basically what you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna say X1, it's times column one, but then you're gonna add that to X2 times column two, plus X3 times column three, and then all of row one, from each of these multiplications is going to be one of your equations. So what you can do, and again we're going to break this down um, in just a minute, is what you do is you take row 1 and you end up timesing it by column 1. So this vector only had one column and so you'll see when we move forward that we're going to have 2x1 plus 3x2 plus 4x3. And so that's sort of the shortcut, but you don't have to do that yet. For now just write it like this, x1 times column 1 plus x2 times column 2, plus x3 times column 3. Then you would distribute, if you want to think of it, so you would have 2 times x1, minus 1 times x1, 6 times x1 as your new column here, column vector. Very similar with um, x2 and similar with x3. And then this would be a result down here. And so this is what I was saying, the shortcut. If you look at this, this was really just row 1 times column 1 from your vector x. So it was row 1, which was 2, 3, 4, times your vector x, which was x1, x2, and x3. And that gives you your result. All right, and then the first entry in the product, ax, is the sum of products, also called dot product, using the first row of a and the entries of x. This is exactly what we just broke down as the shortcut. So real quick, if you've seen multivariable calculus before and vectors, then you learned about dot product. And so you can just use a dot product which we'll break it down real quick, which we already kind of talked about. So it's just row one from A times column one from X. And the way you do that multiplication is you take the corresponding entry. So you would say entry one from row one times entry one from column one. So two times X one. And then plus, you put plus signs in between, entry two from row one times entry two from column one plus entry 3 from row 1 times entry 3 from column 1. And then that's your result. And you just do this for every row. So you would get the same thing for row 2 times column 1. And then you would do the same for row 3 times column 1. And that's giving you your three equations. And so if the dot product AX is defined, then in general, the ith entry in AX is the sum of products corresponding to the entries from row i. So first we only had a 3 by 3, and so we only went up to row 3, but let's say your matrix went up to row 10 or something, you just could go say row 1 through 10, 
um, the rows from column A times the vector X. All right, so now anytime we have only ones in the diagonal and zeros everywhere else, which we talked about this form in the past, when it had another column for your augmented matrix, we called that reduced row echelon form. But if you don't have your augmented matrix, if it's just your coefficient matrix like this, we call it the identity matrix. And a lot of times you're just going to see it denoted as capital I or italicized capital I. And so just know what that means. It's the identity matrix and it's ones in the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. And so this is an example of a three by three, but it can be any size, any square size for an identity matrix. Okay, now let's talk about this theorem here. And we're going to actually prove this one. So if A is an M by N matrix, and then U and V are vectors in RN, and then C is some scalar, then both of these facts are true. Your matrix A times the sum of the two vectors can be separated as A times vector 1 plus A times vector 2. And then part B, if you have your matrix A times the scalar of C times your vector U, you can think of it as your matrix A times U, and then times everything by that scalar C later. Okay, so we're going to prove and say for simplicity, let's just say that we have three columns. Okay, so N is three, so A has three columns in it, and so then vectors U and V are in R3, meaning each of these column vectors, remember what this means, it means that they have three entries or three rows each. Okay, so we have three rows or three columns as well. And so that's one, two, and three for I. And then, or just in general, U sub I and V sub I are the ith entries and U and V respectively. So it's just a notation to generalize the entries. Okay, so we're gonna start by proving statement A, that A times the sum of two vectors can be broken down or think of it as like distribution. And so let's just write this out. A is your matrix with columns A1, A2, and A3. And then U plus V is this matrix here, this vector matrix, but you have to add up the entries. We talked about vectors a while back, and so this is entry one from vector U plus entry one from vector V. Okay, and so this would be some number. You would add these up and get some number. Same thing for the second entries and the third entries. All right, so now think about what's gonna happen next. Okay, so we talked about the, how the multiplication works. It's going to be row one here times column one here. And that's exactly the result below. And then row two from here times column two from here and so on. All right, and then we can distribute that. We can say it's U1 times A1 and then plus U2 times A2 plus U3 times A3, which is here. Same thing with the Vs. And then this is exactly the columns of A. So it's A times U plus the columns of A times V. So AU plus AV. So we just proved this part A to this theorem. Okay, and last, let's prove statement B. So we're going to start with A, our matrix, times uh, C times our vector U. And so notice what that looks like. Here's our matrix A. It's columns A1, A2, A3. And then notice our vector U has its uh, scalars multiplied to each entry, C times U1, C times U2, and so on. And so we know how this works. It's going to be column 1 here, A1, times row 1 here, C times U1. And so that's over here. And we just do that for each column and row. And then from there, what we can do, because multiplication is associative in this case, uh, we can actually factor out the C from each of these products. And so just kind of pull that out front and then put the parentheses around U1 and A1, saying that we're going to multiply U1 times A1 before we multiply by C. That's the change in this notation here. And we do that for each of those terms. And then you can factor out C from all of these. And then that's exactly C times A, our matrix A, times our vector U. Okay, so that's our introduction to matrix equations and some properties that you can use with them and multiplying matrices. That's it for this one.